out and there's it's completely different uh, although it works with MAC addresses but it's not concerned with them it's actually looking for IP addresses of the computers that it receives from so in a minute or so we would actually be going to talk about um, the layer 3 bridging okay finally layer 4 bridging layer 3 bridging excuse me I thought we we're going up and up layer 3 bridging in layer 3 bridging there are a couple of differences with layer 2 first of all it's the promiscuous mode which network interfaces do not support for example when you want to connect a uh, wireless network to a wired network okay since wireless networkers do not support promiscuous modes you have to automatically switch to layer 3 bridging well in an XP when you do that there's nothing that you have to actually set or configure because it does that automatically for you it will just simply switch to layer 3 for um, bridging but um, this is what hap actually happens in layer 3 in layer 3 since we are operating at the third layer which is the network layer, layer of the uh, OZ model what happens is that we are only operating with actually the bridge when it wants to actually send the packets and forward the packets through one port to the other port it would actually use IP address to understand uh, where they have to go and so on okay but it, whereas in uh, layer 2 we were just talking about uh, of MAC addresses and so on okay and a couple of other things you have to know is that here as you see we've got um, different tables for our different workstations and our bridge as well here we've got ARP tables for our PCs ARP table here this is the laptop I just wrote a PC one whatever um, ARP table for PC for laptop ARP table for the PC2 but we have a L3F layer 3 forwarding table for the bridge here okay this computer is going to be acting as a bridge we're not going to talk about these structures anymore um, just give it a brief review um, this computer has two connections one to the wire network one to the wireless network this is an access point so the laptop has um, connected to it and this computer has also connection to this access point as well and this computer here in the middle is going to act as a bridge for us okay well you might ask yourself first of all what is the ARP table I don't know anything about ARP well ARP short for address resolution protocol what it has to do is to resolve IP addresses into MAC addresses as you see from the table there um, every single IP address has an associated MAC address and that's the ARP job to go out there and look for this and simply bring it back for the computer that is looking for okay how does it do that uh, well ARP would simply send out ARP requests to computers on the same subnet and the computer that actually is the destination would receive it and the computers in the same subnet would, just, would actually look them up look that ARP request up in that in their own table if they have it if they have it they would just simply send a reply with the uh, ARP entry in, the, in their table to the computer that just requested that ARP okay so um, that's about the ARP so you don't have to worry about ARP when it comes to layer 3 forwarding let's see what happens when PC1 wants to send a packet okay all the way to all the way to um, PC2 okay so let's see what happens first of all what, ha what happens is that it would come here look up the ARP table of itself and see if it has an associated MAC address with the IP address that it's going to send to well PC2 has an IP address of 192.25.33.15 it would come and look at um, the ARP table of itself and it would find a MAC address I would just simply go ahead and send it for the bridge okay when the bridge received it similar to what happened in layer 2 when the bridge receives a packet what it does first of all here it is first of all when the bridge receives a packet it will first process the source address if it has the if it doesn't have the source address it will simply just go ahead and add the source address with the associated port and the IP address and the MAC address to its list if it ha has it already what it would do is to go ahead and process the destination address well if it has the destination address in this list for example here it has the destination address what happens is that 
Here it's a little bit di different with layer 2. Here what the bridge does it would actually change the sender address to its own address. What does that mean is that when PC1 is, was going to send the packet it said that okay this is my packet for example here the sender address would be PC1 okay and the destination address will be PC2. In layer 3 when the bridge receives this kind of packet and looks at it it will say okay there's no PC1 anymore I'm going to send this packet for you PC2 so we just simply go ahead and put its uh, IP address information here in the frame and it would be and it would be saying that this is me that I'm going to send you for the packet and oh, okay a little bit and here it would put the destination same as it was which it was PC2 so actually the bridge is going to change the source address from PC1 to um, the bridge itself uh, when it's going to send it for PC2 okay so let's go back to see what happened here in this case in the first case that we were talking about when PC2 wants, wanted to send a packet first of all it looked up its own ARP table it found here it found the associated entry okay so it sent it for the bridge the bridge received it it had the source address already so no problem let's go talk about the destination address it looked up the destination address it also had the destination address as well okay so what it did it only just changed the source address to itself and it sent it for PC2 so when PC2 receives it the source address is not PC1 anymore it would just assume that it received it from the bridge the bridge was sending it for PC2 okay it won't understand that someone such as PC1 send it for PC2 okay so one um, actually one thing that we could 